Knicks in Philly for the return match against the 76ers, the new look Sixers. And uh, as he usually does, things started out well for the Knicks, man. RJ continuing his confident and dominant performance, setting the tone. Julius was in his bag early. You know, both guys are dynamic duos, setting the tone early for the Knicks. But you had to figure in the second half, Philly was going to turn the Jets up. And how would the Knicks respond once they did? And you had to figure that it wouldn't be so well. And uh, that's exactly what we got. Philly turned it up on both ends of the floor, offensively, defensively. Uh, and Knicks just had no answers, man. And Knicks fall again. 123 to 108. Now losers of 16 of their last 19, 25 and 37 on the campaign. Game started out well. You know, uh, Julius was in his bag early, in his, in his isolation bag. No doubles from, from Doc, which was, which was interesting. He had single coverage on Julius. He had RJ, uh, once again, just being a maestro. But I said, you know, as the Sixers cut that lead in the second quarter, and a lot of it, you know, Embiid really was, was quiet at, at that point. And he didn't really see the, that, that, that much energy from the Sixers team. And said, ah, second half is, is going to be tough. It's going to be a tough one. And that's what we got, man. Sixers turned up their energy. Forced a ton of Nick turnovers. You know when that Nick offense settles in the half court. and becomes disaster all over again. And again, it's not just Harden. It's not just Embiid. What are you doing, Max? He starts cooking. 25 points for Maxi, flaming quickly in the second half. You had Tobias Harris hunting Obi in the second half. 14 for Harris. After that, show's over. Another frustrating, another frustrating loss tonight. And uh, you know, at this point, you know, you're looking for development. <clears throat> you're looking for development. You know, you start with RJ and and on a positive end, I know he didn't he didn't end the night uh the most efficient, you know, nine of 21. Uh, but he still showed, uh, he still showed progress. Um, specifically, yeah. when you start to look at individual moves, um, you know, the way that he played, you know, we talked about, you know, how teams are now going to, you know, scout and, and have film on him being the lead guy instead of him being a complimentary player. And tonight he showed some counter moves versus a team that you play on the second time, this time on the road, again on national television. And I counted in the, just in the, I believe it was in the first half, three shots in the mid range. Yeah. You know, there was one in the second quarter with seven minutes left. He shot a mid range pull up. Uh, that was a nice move. It was an open mid range and he took the pull, shot. Pull up, pull up game was on point tonight. Yeah. And then he had two more other mid range shots with a contest and, and, and made those shots. So, you know, when you start looking at RJ, I think he had, this is now starting to become CP something where, you know, are we past the whole 20 points mark, you know, set, uh, milestone for Far, him? Like, are yeah, we past yeah. that now where this is now a player that's going to become a consistent 20 points per game or more player um so i think from that standpoint looking at, looking at it from a development standpoint i think that's a positive uh from you know the game listen another double digit lead that the knicks you know squandered and and that's not a surprise to me uh you know you're facing a veteran team you could just feel it you know like you mentioned and b was quiet he wasn't aggressive uh you could just tell recording you know, in progress the way the way that they ended the first half wasn't too great. Um, and, and third quarter, you know, this season, the Knicks are shooting 41% um, in third quarters um, yeah. the whole season. 19 and points so, tonight in the third. Right. And, and in the third, like you mentioned, 19 points, and there it is, 39%. Um, they shoot from the field in the third quarter. So a lot of fans call it the third quarter of doom. Well, you saw it tonight. And, and I'll cap it with this, man. I think at this point, 
you know, it's just frustrating watching these games and, and I'm going to go to it and, and not seeing the young guys um, specifically a Deuce McBride when we continue to see, you know, Alec Burks out there. And to be honest, CP, I know, you know, we joke around about it with Alec Burks and all that, but is it really his fault? You want to play Burke so much? Play him with McBride. How about that? Let's see that. Let's see him play with McBride, right? And it's like, let's see them play with McBride. You want Burks to bring the ball up a few times? Give him, give him that. All right, fine. Yeah. But like the the notion that you're trying to win, which obviously I believe he is, but then we're not seeing a guy that can give you stuff that can lead to wins or can lead to, to, to productive bats in terms of what he asks as a coach, because I don't want to hear about his, like I'm hearing about McBride's readiness as a point guard. Hello. This, this is not even an offensive coach. This guy wants defense. He wants hustle. He plays hard. How many times does he goes? He goes crazy on his own young players when they play, when they miss the defensive rotation, at least with McBride, um, he may miss an assignment because he's learning NBA assignment defense, rotational defense, but at least on ball defense, hustle and effort, you're going to get that from him. So I don't, I also don't know CP why he's not playing. And at this point, I don't even know if we're going to see him more than what we're seeing right now. Uh, Cam had his moments, as we said, had a nice feed to Taj for a dunk, nice three pointer, had to scoop some scoop layups off of his drives. Looked pretty good. Got to end one in the second half. Closed the second half because Fournier was that bad. So Tibbs did uh, play Cam the entire fourth quarter because Fournier was was so atrocious. Um, so that was good run for Cam. I thought that, you know, just looking at the bench, it was almost a tell two halves for the bench as well because I thought quickly had things cooking on both ends in that first half. And that second half, he was he was bad. He was atrocious. Maxie was flaming him, and then offensively, hey, the ball was stay. I mean, he 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 ran up the shot clock twice in back to back possessions. I believe it was back to back. You know, so again, that that's what I was looking at when I'm looking at the first half. I'm like, yeah, you know, we're playing well, but you're really not getting Philly's A game. Like you could tell that their energy was just not as potent as that first game. What's gonna happen when they start turning up the Jets? And, and that was it. Obviously, watching the game, great to see R.J. Barrett have a 30-point night, even though it wasn't efficient. Watching this young guy, this cornerstone piece, continue to, to develop into something good and potentially great is always good to see. Yep. But uh, then that leads into the bad news, man. I'm just like every other fan, man. I want to see Tibbs and I want to see Julius out of there and – I hear you guys You guys have been talking about this same topic for the past week or so. I've heard all your takes on it. But it's like, if this front office is watching what we're watching, I don't understand how they don't have the same takes. And I understand that there's assets and politics and a lot of other things that goes along with it. But mm-hmm. if they are serious about building a winner, like long-term winner, I don't see how you go into next season with Tom Thibodeau and Julius Randle. I don't think there's enough moves that that can be made in the summer to give Tibbs the roster that he needs yeah. to compete like he wants to. But what so, what's, what gives you the thought that automatically selling low and getting rid of both of those guys puts us in a better position? Uh, I think I, I just think giving RJ the keys and just trying to go into a direction to where we're building around. RJ and the young pieces that we have, I think that's mm-hmm. better than continuing to try to chase this mediocrity that Thibodeau is trying to chase. He's trying to win games now, and it seriously looks like he's tanking. And I don't, I don't, I don't see, I don't see how this is going to be, you know, productive in any way. But the office got to get it right. Y'all think it was a fruit a couple of weeks ago when I aired Leon out? Nah, dude, you got to get this right. This is all on you, dude. It's on you. You know what I'm saying? This whole situation is on you. You ain't done nothing here. Nothing. It was just mentioned a little while ago. You didn't draft RJ. You didn't sign. You ain't signed Julius. You you blew this cap money. You ain't made no trades. You ain't done nothing here. 
Mills laid all this down out for you. What have you done since you've been here? This draft right here is on you. And God knows if we get somewhere at four and five, and that boy Ivy is still on that on that on that on that on that draft board, and you don't break the neck to trade up to go get him, you need to immediately get up out of here. But while I'm talking about Ivy, let me share somebody else with y'all. You know what I'm saying? It's another young boy. He's six seven point guard. He's a five star. He came into this league in college. He's a freshman. He's over there in Nebraska. This boy name is Bryce McDowens. He don't mm-hmm. gave old boy at Wisconsin a business already. You're gonna see him again. Pay attention to him. He's six mm-hmm. seven. He leads the point guard and he's forty percent from the from the from the field goal percentage. I don't want to hear nothing about Ty Ty. You know, why Ty Ty ain't even that. The New Jersey Nets game. Mm-hmm. I don't want to hear nothing about Ty Ty. You know what I'm saying? If he was in that draft last year, he wouldn't even been in the first round. Point blank. This right here, this draft pick is so trash. If you can't make, if you can't come out of college this year and get drafted in this first round right here, you need to continue on staying in school and go ahead and get your college degree mm-hmm. and go ahead and prefer to have a professional career somewhere else. That's how trash this draft is. That's how much short period of time you got, Leon. You must get this draft right here right. It is mandatory. This here is our future. This here is our, the only way you can fix things in New York to make us feel any better about this season. You you need to pick and bring the right person in here. I'm not worried about the contract to be, um, to be traded and everything. You must get this point guard situation right on this draft. That's the only thing I'm asking for you. That's the only thing you need to do. You owe that to us. I need to see that boy Ivy in the backcourt with RJ. That's a nice tandem. By any means, you need to go get this guy. Don't act like no, you, you did with um, Lonzo Ball. Didn't want to give up no draft pick. You still holding picks for what? We still got picks. What are you trying to do? The Boston Celtic thing? You need to get the situation completely right. You know what I'm saying? That's the only thing that matters. I don't even be watching these games going on no no, no more right now because I can't stand to see what's happening. I can't stand the situation, what's happening with this team, man. 